Hello, good evening. British troops are to withdraw from Sangin in Helmand province where 99 of them have died in the past four years. Defence Secretary Liam Fox said American Marines will take over responsibility for the area later this year. Our reporter James Hurst at Camp Bastion has all the details. James, why is this happening? Well, Matt, it is because there are thousands more American troops already here. In Helmand province, American personnel actually outnumber British by more than two to one. It's all part of General David Petraeus' surge, and we always knew that that surge was going to mean reconfiguration of troops on the ground. Now, it's been rumbling around as an idea for a little while that Sangin might be handed over by the British to the Americans. Now we know that when 40 commando leave as scheduled in the autumn, it will be the Americans in charge there. And I think that it's come so soon has surprised some people. The news actually leaked last night ahead of a planned statement which was made today in the Commons by the Defence Secretary. ISAF intends to restructure its forces in Farah and Nimroz provinces so that it can consolidate a US Marine Brigade in Northern Helmand, which will assume responsibility for security in Sangin later this year. This will simplify current command arrangements and enable UK troops to be redeployed to reinforce progress in the key districts of Central Helmand. Now, Sangin, a really difficult area, as you were saying. Some people read into that what they will, but the message that the government and British military have been pushing today is that this is a routine change of troops on the ground and that it's been taken purely because it makes military sense. It's anything but a retreat. It's, it, it's, it's passing on a, a going concern to the Americans as part of an entirely sensible reconfiguration of, um, of, of Helmand. Uh, what we will have is uh, the British focused in the critical centre. We'll have an American uh, brigade in the north and an American brigade in the south. Um, and the population that those uh, formations are responsible for will, will be roughly equitable. Uh, so it makes entire sense. Now, there was another important part to today's announcement. Long term, it won't mean any change to British troop numbers here in Afghanistan. But temporarily, until that handover is complete, British force numbers will actually be boosted. The extra soldiers will come from Cyprus. From there, Carla Prater reports. Well, today's announcement in Sangin also has implications here at Episcopi in Cyprus. This is the home of the Theatre Reserve Battalion, the second battalion, the Duke of Lancaster's regiment. And this morning it was confirmed that 300 soldiers from here will be sent to Afghanistan to help with the restructuring of Helmand province. Now, it's the news they've been waiting for here. There have been news and rumours going backwards and forwards. But this morning they got the confirmation they were waiting for. The Defence Secretary, Liam Fox, saying they'll be going on a three-month tour to assist ISAF forces. Now, among those to deploy are members members of Blenheim and Arnhem Company. I caught up with Arnhem recently when they were on exercise theatre ready. And having spoken to them, there's a real drive and enthusiasm to get back into theatre again. Many of them already served in Afghanistan before, and it's hoped they can put their skills and experience to use in the next few months. Carla Prota, Forces News, at Episcopi in Cyprus. The fight in Sangin has been the very toughest. Since British troops arrived in Helmand province some four years ago, no other area has claimed more British lives. So, with UK troops now in their final months in Sangin, my colleague here, Kath Brazier, has been looking more closely at what they will leave behind and the reasons for the departure. Of the 312 UK deaths in Afghanistan since 2001, 99 have been in the Sangin district. 11 of those were in the last two months, all members of 40 Commando Royal Marines. They're the battle group that currently hold the district, and it now looks like they'll be the last British unit based there. To put this move in an historical context, the Americans have been taking over parts of Helmand province from British troops since 2007. Nauzad in the far north and Garmasir in the south were the first to be transferred. In March this year, the town of Musakala was handed over to US Marines, who also took charge of the strategically important Kajaki Dam last month. The suggestion that this is part of a long-term strategy is in part backed up by the creation of regional command southwest. 
On Saturday, before the announcement was made public, the commanding officer of Task Force Helmand told British Forces News that concentrating British troops in the central belt of Helmand province made perfect military sense. We can make sure that the resources a regional command brings with it, things like I-Star and electronic warfare and other enablers, are focused on the, what the main effort is in central help. So we enjoy those benefits. And a regional command is a very powerful organisation. Uh, it's very well staffed and uh, it can provide us far more fidelity in terms of the information that I need to make my decisions. The UK's 8,000 troops are now greatly outnumbered by 20,000 of their American counterparts. On the one hand, this is a replacement of the British. On the other, it's a reinforcement of Americans. But the commanding general of Regional Command Southwest is adamant that he still sees UK troops as a vital part of his strategy. An honor to have a unit like Task Force Hellman uh, operating with us, and uh, I think they're making some very, very strong progress within their area. Great, courageous men, one and all who have suffered some, have suffered some casualties, but continue to focus on their mission and on their accomplishments. Although this is a military decision, it has massive political implications. Some people will question whether this is the beginning of the end, preparing the ground for the Prime Minister's plan of withdrawing troops by 2015. Others, including the insurgents, may see it as a British defeat. But there is little doubt that Sangin is a hard place, and for many personnel and their families, leaving the district will be a huge relief. Kath Brazier, Forces News, Camp Bastion. Well, joining me now from our studio in London is Colonel Richard Kemp, former commander of British forces in Afghanistan. Colonel Kemp, thank you very much for joining us this evening. What's your assessment of the British handover in Sangin? It was predictable because um, with the massive influx of US forces into Helmand, there was a need to change the boundaries and the redeployment of British forces into central Helmand to a, to a sort of continuous geographical area makes sense. What do you say to those who say it represents a, a retreat by British forces? Well, if we were just abandoning Sangin and leaving it to the Taliban, of course, that would be the case, and we should all be, um, you know, amazed by that. But, of course, it isn't happening. What's happening is it's a relief in place by one military force by another, by a very powerful U.S. Marines battle group, which is um, going to be building on the success in Sangin that our forces have achieved. You talk about the success in Sangin, but nearly a third of British casualties have taken place there. What have we achieved in the time that we've been in Sangin? Well, we talk about our own casualties, and rightly we focus on that. We also have inflicted very, very severe casualties on the enemy in Sangin. Uh, many more Taliban fighters have been killed by our soldiers and have killed our troops. Now, that's not the only measure of success, although it's an important one that we should always remember. But we've also brought further economic development to Sangin. The market, which is very important to the people there, has expanded um, by at least double in the last six to eight months alone. The communications routes have been improved across uh, from east, west, north, south from Sangin. And above all, I think the, the government of uh, Afghanistan has maintained uh, control over Sangin only because we've allowed it. Now, the government's not perfect and control is not perfect, but it's right in the heartland of Taliban territory. And that in itself is a major achievement by our troops. This next 12 months is going to be a pivotal year in terms of our involvement in Afghanistan. Do you agree with that? It is going to be pivotal. I think the, next, the, the rest of this year and into next year are going to be absolutely crucial. We're going to see whether the troop surge has worked. But that's only one aspect, aspect of it. The military aspect is only one part. The, uh, the other things we need to sort out, and we need to do very rapidly as well, is to, to, to help the Afghan government become much more effective and more well-respected across the community. And we also need to clamp down on the Pakistan support that's given to the Taliban. We need to, get, we need to help t Pakistan not just to stop supporting them, but also to attack the Taliban inside their own borders. OK, Colonel Kemp, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the programme this evening.